can you really earn passive income from property? Well, yes, you actually can, but it's not just gonna happen that way. I've fallen into every landlord trap, taking late night calls from tenants, spending my weekends decorating, viewing so many properties back to back that they all just blur into one. And what I've learned, weird as it sounds, is that setting yourself up for passive income takes a lot of active effort at the start and a lot of thought. So I'm gonna share five actions that you can take to avoid having to go through the whole learning process that I have. And while they're all really important, the last one is essential to get right or none of the rest will work. The first action that you have to take right at the start is to choose the right strategy. And if your objective is passive income, then that strategy has to be buy properties, rent them out for a really long time, that's it. There are, of course, a lot of ways to make money from property and they're all great, but they're just not passive. There's no passive version of doing a refurb, doing a flip, managing an HMO, providing holiday accommodation. They're all great ways of making money, but they all involve effort. And that's what we're trying to eliminate for the purposes of this video. Following the approach of just buying properties and renting them out isn't that exciting and it won't make you rich overnight, but it will over time help you to build a portfolio that genuinely changes your life without you having to do much. The second key thing is to choose the right property. This is everything. All the hassle in my portfolio comes from the same handful of properties and they're all the ones where I didn't follow the rules that I'm about to describe. There is a template in terms of the type of property that I've seen work time and time again to achieve this. So the first thing to look for is something that's new or new-ish. Why? Because it minimizes maintenance. Your kind of Victorian terraces are lovely and they can be great, but things do go wrong a lot and that takes up your time. So given that maintenance issues are one of the major things that draw you in and take up your time, choosing a type of property that intrinsically minimizes that is the way to go. That type of property, by the way, can be a house or a flat. It doesn't matter which, people have very strong views about this, but my best properties are both houses and flats. Really doesn't matter. What does matter is having a city center location or a strong commuter area. Why is that? because you have lots of rental demand. And when you have lots of rental demand, it's really easy to rent it out. You don't have to put much effort into doing that. You're also able to take your pick of tenants. You'll hopefully have lots and lots of applicants so you can choose the people who seem like they're going to be the least work, frankly, which is what we're going for again. Also, I like to pick properties where the target market isn't gonna be just students. Students are fine, I rent to students, it's not a problem, but you do tend to have to then find a new set of tenants every year, which does, again, take up time. So students can work well, but I don't want the market to just be students. I also don't want the property to be too cheap. I know that sounds weird, but cheap properties tend to come with issues. They just do. Sometimes it looks like they shouldn't on paper, but in my experience, they absolutely do. So I try to go for this slightly more premium end because that way you just do avoid a whole lot of problems. I can't emphasize enough just how important this is. And it's something that you can't recover from. If you pick a property that's gonna be hard work, it's gonna be hard work, whatever you do, and you don't have a lot of choice in the matter. You can't recover from that. So getting the property right, so important. The third thing you can do is to outsource the sourcing. Actually buying the property in the first place can take up an immense amount of time. And the first time round, you probably don't mind because it can be quite fun, but it will hold you back from growing your portfolio. People talk about all these elaborate ways of finding deals that can involve leafleting or putting adverts on your car or whatever. And they can work, but chances are you'll do better if you spend your time doing what you're best at, which then generates the funds that you need to invest, and then let someone else do what they're best at, which is actually going out and finding the properties. This is something that we do for our clients at Property Hub Invest, and that's where I get most of my properties through now. But you don't have to use us. There are plenty of other options, and I've used lots of them over the years. So there are other professional sourcing companies out there, of course. Another option is to work with other local investors, people who are out there seeing lots of properties anyway. Maybe their strategy is more active, so they're out doing lots and lots of viewings, and they might be willing to pass on properties to you that aren't suitable for them. That can be a really good source of getting properties to come to you without having to go out and do all the legwork. Another approach is to contact local letting agents, not estate agents, but letting agents. And the reason for that is that for letting agents, getting new landlords is really hard. It's something that they have to put a lot of effort into, but then once they've got one, it can make them money for a long time. So they're willing often to put some effort in up front to actually get you as a client. 
especially if they've got a client that they know is selling or thinking about selling, they might let you know about that first, potentially even before it hits the open market. If you say to them that if you buy it, you'll continue to use them. So that is something that I've done in the past that does work pretty well. Whichever way you choose to do it, and it can be all of the above, being exposed to lots of deals via other people doing all the work so it scales better is how you find the right deals and it's how you get discounts as well. Action number four is to build the right team. If you're gonna be passive, other people need to be active because there's a lot to do. The key is finding the right people who you can trust to just get on with it. So here are some of the people that your team will need to include. First up, there's a mortgage broker. You can technically arrange your own mortgages, but don't. It's so complicated, you're highly unlikely to find the right product, find the best rate, and even if you do, it takes up so much of your time. A mortgage broker is a really great deal, even if they charge you a fee. Next up is a letting agent. And yes, letting agents can be very annoying and not very good to work with. And yes, you have to pay them, and it's cheaper to not pay them and just do it yourself. But doing it yourself is not passive, and that's why for this model, you need a letting agent. Next, there's a bookkeeper and an accountant, which can be the same person or the same firm, but can be different. An accountant, you need to do all your annual filings and of course, to make sure you're set up properly in the first place. You can do all the filings yourself, but again, it's just not a good use of your time. And chances are an accountant is gonna know about deductions you can claim or have the confidence to do things in a certain way that's actually gonna save you money compared to if you were doing it yourself. And then you need a bookkeeper because going through and categorizing a whole load of transactions is not a good use of your time. If there aren't many of them, maybe your accountant can do it. When you get to a certain scale, maybe you need a dedicated bookkeeper, but either way, someone needs to do it. And finally, there's my secret weapon, which is getting a PA. The great thing about having a PA is they don't need to be full time. Even if you've only got someone for say five hours a week, they can end up taking a whole load of things off your plate because however great the team that you work with, however you set things up to be passive, there will be things that need your attention. But even though they need your attention, you don't need to be the one to do them necessarily. So all of that can be taken off your plate. And of course, as you grow, then you can take someone on for more time, but then you'll have the revenue and the profit to justify doing that. There are lots of different ways of working with PAs. So at one end of the scale, you could have someone who's actually local to your properties, who does some of the hands-on management bits themselves. At the other end of the scale, you could have someone overseas. And there's lots in the middle as well. So there's many, many different ways. Just think about what you need and how you wanna make it work and give it a try. I've used different models over the years and I always approach it from a position of going, okay, well, what do I not want to be doing at the moment? And then find what seems to be the best way of achieving that. And you can just try it and see what works for you and what doesn't. And that point about what don't I want to be doing takes us into the final point, which is by far the most important, which is having the right mindset. The one thing I found that really helps is to learn enough to verify what you're being told. You don't have to learn everything. You don't have to be an expert in every area. That's why you hire people. But it's very hard to just take things on faith and trust people because they tell you to. And you should never do that anyway. It's important that you know enough that you can sense if something's not right, especially when it comes to assessing deals. That's one of the most important things you can possibly do. So you need to know enough. The great thing is, because you don't have to be an expert, you don't have to spend a load of money or time doing this either. There are plenty of free resources out there, including this channel and our podcast and loads of other things as well that can allow you to get your own knowledge up to speed. So you get to that point or the sweet spot of knowing enough without feeling like I have to know everything before I can get started. Beyond that though, you just need to have the discipline to let go, stay out of the detail and embrace what we call the investor mindset, not the landlord mindset. When you do that, there will be times when things aren't done exactly how you'd like them to be. Things aren't done perfectly, things maybe even cost you a bit more money than if you'd been making all the decisions yourself. But that's okay, it's far more important that you just get something running that runs itself over here while you can go over here and either make more money or have more fun. So yes, by putting the work in at the start and following these five points, it really is possible to make passive income from property. But where should you be investing? Well, we've got that covered in this next video.